section, um, I want to make sure we did a couple of definitions um, and a couple of notes before we dive into probability. So probability is the likelihood of an event occurring. Um, so that means what's the probability of um, there being rain today? What's the probability of me getting a royal flush when I'm playing poker? Um, these are all examples of probability in real life. Um, probability is one of those things that is used a bunch. Um, simple probability is just the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. So, for example, um, a favorable outcome would be if I said, uh, what is the likelihood of it raining today versus not raining today? So, um, or what is the likelihood of uh, me drawing a queen from a deck of cards. Um, so I would put there are four queens. So I put four over the possible outcomes, which is 52 because there are 52 cards. Compound probability, on the other hand, is a comp is the likelihood of multiple events occurring. So me drawing a queen and then putting it back and then drawing a king after that. So this is just some definitions. Um, and then I'm going to give you some examples of what these would look like. All right, so we talked a little bit about simple versus compound. So we're going to jump right into that after those notes. What is the probability of rolling a six on a six-sided die? So this would be simple. Straightforward, one event. So the probability of rolling a six on a six die. So if we remember... Simple probability is the number of favorable outcomes or what you want to happen over the number of possibilities. So in this, if we think back, okay, so we have a dice and there are six sides to it. How many of them have a six on it? Well, only one. So the probability, so the number of favorable outcomes is just one. And then we think about how many other possibilities there are. Well, there are six, there are six sides. So one over six is the possibility of rolling a six. Um, we could also say something like, what's the probability of rolling an even number? So how many even numbers are, are there on a dice? So we have two, four, and six. So there are three possibilities out of six. So in this one, what's the probability of rolling a six and then a two? So we think back to compound probability that is um, one event occurring and then the other. So we take the probability of one event and multiply it by the probability of the second event. So rolling a six, we already decided that's one out of six times rolling a two. Well, there's only one side that has a two, so one over six. When we multiply those, we get one over 36. So the probability is one over 36. Um, so we'll come right back with another example. So we have a couple of examples of probability on here. Um, the first one says the two red queens are removed from a standard deck of cards. What is the probability of drawing a red card? So we have 52 cards. If we remove two cards, how many do we have? Well, we have 50. So instead of 52, we have 50 cards. Um, if we think back to, we have 52 cards, half are black, half are red. So if um, we have 52, divide that by two, that means 26 are red, 26 are black. Well, if we took out two red cards, that means instead of 26, we took away two, we only have 24 red cards. And this is 50 total cards. So we want to know the probability of drawing a red card from a deck of 50. Well, we would put favorable over total. And we can reduce that. So we have um, two goes into both of those. 12 over 25. 12 over 25. We can also make this a percentage. We could do 12 divided by 25 gives me... Um, 0.48, move that decimal over, we have 48%. So there's a 48% likelihood that you'll draw a red card once you remove two red queens. 
All right, there are 49 tiles, each with a number from one to 49 printed on them. What is the probability of drawing the number 26? Well, how many total outcomes are there? Well, 49. And how many of them have the number 26 on them? Only one, so that's an easy one. One over 49. All right, so this one's um, getting into complex probability, or compound probability, sorry. Roll a dice and then flip a coin. What is the probability of rolling a three or greater and then flipping heads? So we want the probability of our dice roll times the probability of our coin flip. So probability of rolling a three or greater. So on a dice, there are how many numbers? Well, six, so that's a total of six. And how many of them are three or greater? So we have three, four, five, six. That's four. So we have four over six is the probability of just rolling a three or greater. And then flipping heads. So if we flip a coin, how many possibilities are there? Well, heads, tails. That's two possibilities. And how many of them are heads? Just one. So then we just multiply that across. So four times one is four. And then six times two is 12. If we were to reduce that, four goes into both of those. One and three. All right, so go ahead and try these next two on your own. easy for you. So we have two problems. The first one's going to be simple probability. The second one's going to be compound probability. So let's look at that first one. Billy has a bag full of candies. The bag has six strawberry candies, three watermelon candies, and four green apple candies. What is the probability that Billy will pull a green apple candy from the bag? So we have simple probability in this one, one of n. And we want the number of favorable outcomes over total outcomes. So let's figure out the total outcomes. Total outcomes would be the total number of candies in this case. So we have six, three, and four. So we can add those up. Six plus three is nine, plus four is 13. So our total possibilities is 13. And then the favorable ones are the green apple, because that's what we want to know. So green apple in this case, there are four possibilities. So four over 13. Usually with probability questions, the answers will be in percent. We want to know the percent likelihood, the percent probability. So we're going to need to remember converting between fractions, decimals, and percentages. So I'm going to make this a decimal and then convert it, convert it into a percent. So 4 divided by 13 gives me 0.31 because I'm going to round it up. And I'm going to convert that into a percentage, so 31% is the answer for that first example. So let's look at the second one. Amanda tosses a quarter four times. She wants to toss a heads, then a heads, then a tails, then a heads. What is the probability of this happening? So when we're dealing with compound probability, we need to multiply each individual probability. So the probability of tossing a heads, one over two. So there are two possibilities when you toss a coin. Heads, tails. So heads, the probability of drawing of throwing a heads, 
throwing tails, throwing heads. In this one, it all happens to be that each outcome has the same probability. So when we multiply all of those, it should give us 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So it should be 1 16th is the percentage. And that's it for probability.